Hey guys, Harv here, and the first step to making a VTOL, as is the same with any ship, is to choose what cockpit you want to use. Now, in all honesty, I would not recommend using that. That's about as aerodynamic as a shoe. It's a weird example. So, I usually go for these two. This one don't like so much because it hasn't really got a front, and this one's a bit heavier, which can help with uh, your centre of gravity. Because centre of gravity is very important. Now, what am I doing? Uh, basically, you want to have your vertical lift engines, as you probably saw in that video just then, uh, engines that are vertical. <laughs> probably, you want to be having them at the centre of gravity, horizontal with it. Now, my personal favourite design, I'm just going to make a small one, I'm not going to make a massive giant like you saw just then. My favourite type with this is to have, I personally like having this tail, what's it called, a tail connector. I personally quite like having that, and at the back, it's quite good with stability as well to have some canards, and we can have some winglets underneath it, help quite a bit. Also, if your ship, if your rocket is, it's not a rocket, it's a plane, damn it, it's a VTOL. If it's prone to tilting backwards on the pad, on the runway, then that's fine, because it's got, you know, something to sit on. And because obviously we can't have an engine there, this also is a good way to have, to make an excuse to have double engines. We'll put them on the sides, just here. Uh, you can just have one tank of fuel, but again, it, it's more about weight than fuel requirements. Or at least it is in my case, so I'm going to have two. Just so it's fairly heavy. If it's too light, then it'll just jump off the runway. Which, you know, that could be something desirable, depending on what you'd like. Uh, for some AI control, we'll have avionics package there. Also makes a pretty cool nose cone. Uh, looks are, of course, very important. And now is the important bit, apart from looks, having the vertical. So what you want to do is just slot it on the side where you think is roughly the middle of your ship. I'd say on this one it's maybe about here. And then just press A or D to rotate it the right way. Like that. I think that's actually upside down, but oh well, it doesn't matter. And then we can press uh, W or S or W in this case, obviously, to put it the right way. Don't know why it's different for each one, but oh well, doesn't really matter. So there we are, there, those are our vertical takeoff. Now, of course, we're going to actually need some wings, because this is intended to fly. Those are going to be way too small. We want to use delta wings. Now, putting these on can be a bit tricky. Uh, they generally just slant like that. So what you want to do is get it the one that's nearest to horizontal. So I'd say this one can do. Hold shift and then you can use the W or S keys to move them forwards or backwards like that. So I'd say that should be about right and it is. Obviously there's a massive gap here and this tiny connection to the plane is going to be pretty fragile. So we'd probably want to put some struts in around here just to keep it a bit more stable. And we can do the same for the other side of the tank. Struts are always good. Struts are lightweight and they really do help keep things together, rigid. If the tanks were any higher, I'd probably put struts in between them. Uh, just, you know, because it's quite a lot of weight in the middle that's being supported by two engines quite far out to the sides. So anyway, that helps. And for control, we're going to want some control surfaces. Put them here. You can use three small ones. If you see here, the lift rating is 0.5. And the lift rating here is 0.7. So even using two, you'll get more lift. Uh, you know, two next to each other. Uh, but we're not going to do that, because we don't really need that much lift, I don't think. This seems like a pretty solid design. And there you go. You can add more and more wings if you find you not having enough control. Like here, it's quite a good place, I think. Yeah, that's quite good. And, ooh, wow. <laughs> Don't want that. And possibly underneath as well, to try and even it up. Make it look a bit more symmetrical. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. I like that. 
So after you think you've got a decent design, then obviously you, before testing it, I was just about to say you want to test it, but no. I mean, you can do this manually. Before launch, you can click on the back engines and tell them not to fire, but I prefer to just put these in different stage. Drag them down here, and then drag that up, so that when you uh, turn on your engines, it's just these ones. And then you stage, and these ones come on. And then you deactivate these when you're ready, uh, like you saw. Now we're going to call this, uh, we're going to call it Recon version 4, because I've already got three other ones. Save that, and let's launch. Testing. Testing is an important part of any rocket design. If you don't know that, then you shouldn't play this game. It's a bit harsh, but it's true. Just wait for the physics engine to kick in. There we go. Uh, now you probably want to put SES on, try and keep a bit of stability. You can still control, so for any adjustments, that's what you can have that on and still be able to tilt slightly. Now an important part is just to take your hands off the keyboard, full throttle, and initiate the engine, and then just stop. Right, you can see that tilted forwards. We can cut the engines now that tilted forwards, that shows us that um, the engines are just a bit behind the centre of gravity, but it didn't look like it's too bad, it might be something we can counteract by tilting backwards, just to counteract that, let's try it again, physics engine, come on, Shepfert's Kerman, looking prepared, definitely, <laughs> okay, SES on, throttle up, and we're just going to tip backwards. No, okay, that's not working. So it's clear we need to move these engines a bit further back, no, a bit further forwards even. Wait, is that right? Yeah, because, yeah, they're behind the centre of gravity, so we move them forwards to counteract that. Or alternatively, we can take, we can add more weight to the back of here. Um, one way we could do that is we could add some more fuel tanks here. That might be a bit overkill. I mean, we could even add one here. You know what, let's try that. I want to put that back on time symmetry. I wouldn't be scared to add more weight when making VTOL in this design. Wait, does that have to be the other way around? Uh, because having two engines, you really need two engines to take off to be stable and having two means that they can lift a lot of weight. Okay, we have that and then we can actually use that fuel, do something useful with it. Oh, again, it wants to be double time symmetry. Bring that there, that's fine. Right, let's see if that solved our problem. Save it and launch. So now we've added some more weight behind, the centre of gravity should shift backwards slightly. These tail connectors are really light, so they don't actually help that much. Okay, yes, and once again, not bothering to tilt, we'll just see. It should tilt backwards now. Or even straight up, you never know. Ah, oh, that is nice. I'm not touching anything on the keyboard, it's just going straight up. Right, perfect. And now we can initiate the flight engines by pressing space again. And when we get up to speed and they get a little altitude, we can take, deactivate those. Got to make sure to tilt up because you now take, you have to add that vertical velocity because we've just lost these engines. Right, awesome. So that's a working VTOL lift off beautifully. Adding the one tank was a really good idea. Forgive my terrible flying. I'm not particularly good. You know what? Let's take that off and see. Oh, uh, God. Oh, God, no. <laughs> okay, okay. Under control. I'm just not very good at this. Whoa! Ooh. Do you see any planes doing this in real life? I don't think so. <laughs> Maybe we should put Capstock's control on. Ah, that's a bit easier. Yeah, that probably helps. Okay. 
So we've got taking off sorted, and now the crucial part... Oh god, no, 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 not like that. <laughs> Wait, back on. Okay, engine's off. Crucial part of any VTOL is vertical take off and landing. So let's try and land it. Now I'm tilting backwards slightly to try and slow our vertical velocity. I mean, uh, you know, horizontal lateral velocity. Whatever, you know what I mean. Now we'll drop the thrust down so we start falling slightly. We don't want to be rising, we want to be falling, damn it. Tilt backwards, tilt forwards. Tilt backwards, if we keep on moving forwards, come on. Water landing might actually be easier in this circumstance, but I want to see if I can take off again. I've never actually successfully landed a VTOL. This is the first time. Load the thrust. It's a very delicate procedure. Very delicate. I'm really surprised we're still moving forwards, actually. Uh, we can try and use these tail bits to land on. Probably not the best of ideas. Come on. Bit more thrust, try and slow us down some more. Oh yes, a perfect landing. Wonderful. <laughs> it's roughly one piece, you know, if you look at the top of it and then zoom out. I'm sure yeah, that that's a plane right there. Ugh. Anyway, I think we're about done for this tutorial. Thank you very much for watching guys. If you liked the video, then you can, of course, like the video. And I'm not going to make a comment about it, about what I just said. Uh, yeah. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.